country is as country does. Today's hit country, the hottest country hit. Great music. Has them getting ready for school. I just crank it. Your gramps might have some words of wisdom. And that is how babies are made. But you might want to listen to us instead. Where, where new country music lives. Your choice for country music, the RTM Radio Network. Give me a good Making a radio great again with one stupid comment at a time. The Yuki and the Brit. Well, howdy, howdy, everybody. What's going on? Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network Country Saturday night. Good evening. Where is my microphone? It's right there. You can't there. even switch one button, the other one. I know, I don't get it. Oh, that one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> He's been swapping them buttons around again. My bad. <laughs> everybody gets scared when Randy presses the buttons. Hello, yeah. everybody. Hey, look, there's Vicky Sampson in the chat room. We Hello, also have Vicky. Thomas, Mr. Dave Brat Summers. Don't forget old Steve Owen sneaking in here. Like yeah, that. Mrs. Dave, Mr. Chiaco Chiaco, Jake, the beautiful, beautiful Cora. Cora. Laura White. Laura White. Yeah, Laura's right. in here too. Stacy Joe. Carol Durham's in here, and <clears throat> Steve Owen's in here. I'm going to look up that film later on. Steve is just posted in the chat room that he's been watching a film. What we film so, talking uh, about? What, ah, 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 what is it? Magellan. Oh. We'll have to look up that look that up later, won't we? What is it? Magellan. Magellan. Yeah. Or Magellan. Oh, have I said it wrong? I don't know. I, I'm guessing Magellan. What is it, a space movie or? Oh, we like spacey type things. Or is it a movie about God? What is the story? Look, is that Jesus walking on water there? What is it? It's a spaceman. Can't you see him in a space? Well, suit? not from over here. You're you way that? the hell over. I'm going to put you in a glass What'd you call room. call that Scotch mist. Hey, huh? Dick's here. Dicky <laughs> Samson. Hi, Dick. How are you, buddy? I played you a Sierra song. That should make you happy until she goes on stage. Other than that, we're here to do some countrying. We've got a special guest tonight, Adam C. Martin. He's going to be joining us here at 8 o'clock. How yeah, cool you is that? guys are going to love his music. He is absolutely <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and boy, we got a, got a great guest coming up, too, here pretty soon. Oh, with very good music. Oh. Uh, one of the opening numbers there was uh, Kyle Borgall. Borgo. I forget how you pronounce his name, but very good music there, too. That Saturday night song it was the second one we come in with. And you guys, Hello, man, Vicky. banging on all 16 cylinders tonight. Wow, come out of the hole screaming, play this, play that, play this. I'm sitting over doing bozos. No offense, Dave. But, uh, yeah, having a good time over here. So we's ready to do it all up. Stacy Joe's, now she's having Captain Crunch. What? <laughs> I know, I said that girl must be a multitasker. She's in our chat room. She's watching Ghost Mysteries. She's eating cereals. She's on Snapchat. She can't sit still, that one. Boy, I miss Captain Crunch. I used to like that. Oh, now there's a plan. Thomas said, play some hick stick. Mmm, hicky sticky. Yeah. Uh, I still got a couple requests here. Dave's Midland. And, oh, never uh... mind, Dave. Oh, shut up. <laughs> How can you do that? <laughs> Forget Dave. He's going on a cruise and leaving us all. He is. We're going to have some Daveless shows, and you know how we do the Daveless dance. I know. <laughs> yeah, like that. Put your hands in the air like I just don't care. And we shake our tush. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we need to get back to the music then over here, don't we? Thomas said Steve was great last night. I did watch one of his songs last, uh, this morning, and yeah, well, hey, it sounds like he's really got himself together over there. Yeah, good for him. Way to yeah. go. Good doings there, Steve Arino. Gotta anyway, Steve Owen's in the chat room, and he is going to be joining us on the 31st. He is? He is well, of March. 31st of March. Oh, right. How cool is that? I love it. And I promised to behave as well. Hi, Carol. Well, I didn't really. Who promised to behave? No, I was lying. I never promised to behave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever behave. No surprise there. All right. Back to the music. Country Saturday night. Yankee and the Brit. Adam C. Martin at 8 o'clock. Let's do some jamming over here, shall we? I'm on it like stink on shit. 
If you're listening to the Yankee and the Brit Show on Chrome and Steel, we just wanted to let you know where you can find us live. We are live on a Friday and Saturday night on Spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash Rand the Man. You can join us in the chat room, bring your requests, trucking music, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network, and also, like Donna said, you can hear us on Chrome and Steel all through the week. So join us Friday and Saturday night. Saturday is country night. Friday night is rock and roll. Make sure you're there. That's the Yankee and the Brit on the RTM Radio Network and on Chrome and Steel Radio. Yeah, baby. Oh, listen to her go. Donna Joe and Bobby McGee. Yankee and the Brit Country Saturday night. Martin C. No, Adam C. Martin going to be joining us here at 8 o'clock. How he cool will. is that? Top gonna throw a couple of his hour. tunes here at you directly. In the meantime, here's a gal that's gonna be joining us on the 24th of February. Her name is Jessica McNear. Or March, March even. March? 24th of March. I know I need to write that letter for. Uh, oh, okay. Need to write that list a bit I better. Don't yeah. I? 24th of March. Jessica, Mc, Jessica McNear. Check this tune out, man. This is uh, some pretty cool stuff. So we got some great new music coming your way. So. Uh, Hang around every Saturday night and make sure you check that We might out. even play a song that's been wrote by Benny Pitzinger and Steve Owen in a few minutes. Eh? Uh, How does that sound? I've got one of Benny's tunes lined up here. I'll find out but one and we'll get after one, it. you need to play this one because this one's so cool and the video's so cool. I just love I it. I think we just might do that. Yes, sir. All right. Carry on, we shall. <laughs> Trains, trucks, and good old country music with the Yankee and the Brit on RTM Radio. How about that? Jessica McNair, follow me down. We got more of that music coming up March 24th on the show. You want to be here for that. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, let me throw this out here. Let me just say something before you even stop banging on. This damn well better be important. (laughs) Next Sunday, the 11th, we are going to do a show of just independent artists, okay? So uh, if you want to hear your song next Sunday, the 11th, then you can message me on Facebook, Donna Bradley. Most of you guys know me. Or you can comment on the post on the Facebook page. Um, and if you know of an independent artist that you would like their song played, then let us know. I think it's going to be a great night. Because we have only ever, ever had awesome, awesome artists All the on best. our show. All the Most best. of them, you know, about 90% of them have come from Kelly Lee Phillips. And she has gave us a right great lineup of songs to cover us right till the end of March. So, um, you know, and they are all awesome. We've been checking out their music yesterday and today. And I tell you what, some of it's blown us away. So we're, yeah. we're going to be playing some of that next th- next Sunday, the 11th. If you want to hear any of your songs played or any other special artists, then let us know. Now, as I was saying before, I was so unruly really interrupted. interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam C. Martin's going to be joining us here in a little bit. Hi, um, buddy. He's with the band Blackbird Anthem. Here's one of their tunes. Uh, check this out, man. This is some really, pretty wicked stuff they got going on here. Southern Ground. And also, we got Mrs. Dave's tune coming up. And a brand new one from Keith Sampson and the Dixie Crew. And don't forget, after we have had Adam C. Martin on the show, we will be doing our sing-along song. If anybody wants to join in with that video, because we had an awesome time with the um, Man of Constant Sorrow. You know, we had an absolute hoot. So if you guys want to join in the fun, get yourself in that video with us. It's all just a bit of crazy fun. It's, you know, but uh, if you want to join in, then uh, tune in after our artist comes on. Yankee and a Brit, Country Friday night, Saturday night, whatever friggin' day it is. I don't know what it's the hell's Saturday, going on It's Saturday, love. It's Saturday. Totally caught me off guard over there. 759, Yankee and a Brit, RTM Radio Network, Country Music Oh, night. here he is right now. And talk about timing, huh? All right. Hey. Well, hey there. Well, hello there, sir. This is Adam C. Martin. Say hello, Adam. 
Hey, how's everybody doing out there tonight? Awesome, awesome. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Florida. Florida. Oh, you're standing under a palm tree? No, no, I'm a, yeah, I'm I'm not that part of Florida. I'm kind of like in the I'm surrounded by like orange trees and cattle and like the middle of the state. So, I'm not a big beach guy. Well, you get to have some fresh OJ. Reach up and have one for me. There we go. All right, I'll, I'll pull one down and save it for you. Or if you're a nice kind of guy, you'll reach up and grab a couple for me and give them a good squeeze and then you can have an orange. Well, you know, that's always an option. I'll, I'm never, never one to shy away from a good squeeze. <laughs> I don't know. Could be a lawsuit. I'm, well, I, well. I'm the same about um, butt cheeks in a hot pair of jeans. <laughs> good, you know, I mean, and if you're going to get the orange juice, you know, sometimes you'd also then just, just grab the vodka and just go for the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, a good screwdriver. That's right. That's right. <laughs> See, we're going to get along just fine. That's what yes, I we are. So, you look you look like a fine kind of guy. I wouldn't go that far. So, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so what's the story, man? Uh, where's all this great music come from? We played a couple of your tunes already. Wow. Talk about kick-ass. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, I, it's, uh, I like to say, you know, you, you just make it all up, and that's kind of what happens. But <laughs> So when did you start um, making it all up? Uh, actually, not too long ago. I've really been uh, playing music and uh, writing and singing for about maybe eight or nine years. Uh, seriously, for about the past uh, four. That's it? That's it. So, uh, do you mind if I ask how old you are? Uh, I'm 41 right now. What? Yeah, I'm just totally amazed. There are so many guests that we have, and they're all like, oh, I've been doing it three or four years. It's like, I always thought this yeah. was something that took years to develop, and you guys come on the show here, and you just kick ass. Well, you know, I mean, it's, um, when I was a kid, you know, the only thing I knew how to play was a radio. And, um, I mean, I, I've always had a love for music. I mean, I remember buying vinyl records and 45s and then, of course, cassettes and CDs. And, um, and then I, uh, I spent some time in the U.S. Army. I spent, uh, 15 months in Iraq in 03 and 04 and, uh, came back home and, uh, struggled like a lot of, you know, soldiers and warriors do. And, um, and after struggling for several years at the suggestion of a, of actually a counselor, I knew I needed some help. And they said, um, you know, why don't you learn to play an instrument? So I uh, borrowed a guitar. I started watching YouTube videos and I taught myself how to play. I'll be damned. Well, salute to you, by the way. Hey, thank you. Unbelievable. It's just, it's just amazing because the, the sound is like you've been doing it for 30 years. I wish. Yeah, I'd probably be a lot further along than I am. <laughs> Do you think playing music has actually helped you? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, it, it brought such a balance back to my life that, um, you know, and that's that so many of my songs now that I write are about my military experience. And um, I, I try to give back to, to veteran organizations as often as I can. And um, because if it can help me, you know, it can help someone else. And, and, you know, music may not be everybody's thing, but if they could find something that, that can bring that balance back to their life, you know, then um, then we've helped out our brothers and our sisters. And, and that's what, to me, that's what being a soldier is about. It's looking out for, for the person to your left and to your right. Well, I don't want to get into detail, but I just want to ask on a, on a roundabout way, did you see anything really nasty while you were in the service? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We were there. I was there in the very beginning. So uh, the initial invasion into Iraq was March of 03. And my company landed boots on ground in May of 03. So we were there in the very beginning of the war. Um, and what we did, we, we did convoy escort security. So we were we were providing security for supply convoys um, from the border of Kuwait uh, and Iraq up into uh, to a camp about uh, 75 miles north of Baghdad. And so we, I mean, my, uh, my, our convoys and our company, we were hit with sniper fire, small arms fire, IEDs, car bombs, mortars. Um, so we, we saw every bit of that. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was an adjustment. You know, when you, when you live and, and breathe um, survival, and not just survival, but a mission to accomplish. And I was an NCO. I was a sergeant. So I also had soldiers that I had to, to make sure were taken care of. When you live and breathe that for so long, and that's your primary focus. You come back home to a world that is, in some ways, seems very now foreign to you, and um, and people that don't understand kind of where you've been, what you've seen, and what you've experienced. And those 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 don't work. You know, it's the old you know uh, square peg round hole. And um, you know, and it's uh, it's an adjustment. Luckily, I mean, I, I I had some some good people behind me and some really good and uh, counselors and um, 
and now on the other side of it, I, I see so many of of my brothers and my sisters that that still are struggling. And um, you know, and if, if music can help me, it might can help someone else. And even if they can't play music, maybe it's a song I write or something they hear, and that just encourages them to go out and maybe get some help. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, my whole point to the beginning of the question was the fact that, that you believe now that uh, the music you do and learning how to play an instrument, that's kind of helps set your soul free from that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, and that's, and that's how I can talk about it. You know, I, I, I write about it. I sing about it. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's one of those things that I, I, don't, I don't mind talking about. Because if I can, if I can talk about it and, and I can do it, then maybe that'll inspire someone else that, you know, maybe they can talk about things too. And, and kind of, like you say, free, free their soul. Maybe that might be burdened in some way, but, um, and on top of that, man, it's fun. God, this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Feels great, you know? doesn't it? To let that out. It does. I mean, and not, not just, and from that side of it, but heck, I mean, uh, being, being on stage and being able to play music that, that I write and, um, and then have an audience reaction to it. Um, you know, hopefully you got some good reactions from some of it tonight. And, uh, you know, it's just, and not all my songs are related to military. I, I, I tuned in a little bit and you were playing, um, you were playing the train song, um, has nothing to do with military service, but, um, but you know, it's just it's to me it's it's good southern rock music, and I don't think we have enough of that out no, there. No, we do today. not. And the reason I played it is because I'm a train guy, so it's like I got to learn uh, this a couple times. So did you did you pay attention to the words to it? And, no, uh, not yet. I haven't had a uh, chance to really dig in deep, but I will believe me because it's got that beat, you know, that I could just, you know, when I was a truck driver, that was the kind of stuff I like to listen uh, okay. to. Okay, so uh, I'll definitely get deep into it. You wrote, have did you write all these songs? Southern ground, stay strong, tonight we ride. That's correct. I did. Yes. Beautiful work. I'm telling you. And the ba- who's you. your band? Where did they come from? Uh, the, I, I, I've gone through several different band members. Um, and um, so right now, the the band, the only the only kind of permanent band member I have is my lead guitarist. His name's Jeremy Chestnut. Um, but uh, right now, I mean, I, I don't have a full time drummer or, or a bass player. So I just, you know, use guys or friends that uh, when I have full band shows or, or kind of band for hire guys. But um, doing a lot of solo kind of acoustic work right now. I've got a, an acoustic duo tour this summer. Jeremy and I are going to go out and hit a few states um kind of promote the album and you know so it's uh bands ba- bands uh they they're fickle <laughs> yeah i guess you know but um but you know i mean everyone that i've ever had the pleasure to play with they're all super talented guys and you know for one reason or another it, it works it works out or it doesn't work out how but do you, um how do you manage to uh to go from one band to another and they still can play the music you know that you hear in your head how does that possible <clears throat> Well, you know, I mean, um, it, it's luckily when you have recordings, it's easy. Um, but when sometimes you go into the recording studio, um, you know, what I what I would do is when I whenever I had written a new song and, and kind of brought it to the band or took it to the studio to record, I, I kind of told them the story behind it. And every song that I write has some element of truth to it. Thank you. Some are a lot more truthful than others. Like Tonight We Ride is, is pretty much a 100% truth song about what my company did in Iraq on these convoy missions. Um, Southern Ground is another one that's 100% truth. Um, the way it starts out, my great granddad was a farming man who picked cotton. And that's what he did. Um, he wasn't a cotton farmer or owner he was a picker and he would go out and he'd pick cotton to supplement the income to help take care of his family um but like the train song it's a it's a very different type and but there, there's elements of truth to everything i'll be honest so with what, you i didn't even know that cotton grew in a field until i got to texas i was thinking, oh yeah. i was thinking how the hell do sheep <laughs> do sheep grow wool on the backs but cotton is grown yeah, in I a field and just it's shave kind it crazy <laughs> You know, but um, but yeah, so it's um, you know, the, you, you take these songs, and then what I would do is I would start by telling the band the story behind it. You know, the the story behind the lyrics and and how I came to write the song, what feeling I wanted for the song, if I wanted something driving and hard, um, and then you you kind of just play around with it, and you you know, you have a great drummer or a great lead guitar player and you're like yeah yeah, yeah, that i I want that part you know but no i want this over here and um you know it's just kind of like a a meeting of the minds and yeah yeah you end up with a sound then that is just what you hear on the record 
it's beautiful. I got to tell you, it makes me think of the Wrecking Crew that uh, that um, Glenn Campbell was part of back in the day. Oh yeah, you know they played backup music for just about everybody back in the day, and they and you you know I'm, if you know who I'm talking about, I mean they pulled everything together. It didn't matter who they were playing for, they just yeah, you know they all came together on every different kind of music, and it was all great stuff. Yeah, when you when you have really talented musicians and you know that that understand it, and I'm I'm new to this, you know, I, I relatively am. I can't read a lick of music. I don't know how to read music. Um, I don't understand music theory. I've I've never studied it. Well, that was what but, I was about to ask you. Was that um, you know a lot of musicians can't actually read music, and I wondered you know if you're if you approach some different musicians, you know, how do you uh, tell them what to play? You know how. How do you tell them what feel you want to the song um, and, and, and the notes and things? You know what I'm saying? And as far as individual notes, I, I can't tell them, you know, like, oh, I want you to play, uh, you know, this this arpeggio. I don't even know that I can spell arpeggio. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and, you know, but I'll tell them, OK, this the, it's I know enough to say, OK, this song is in the key of G or A and this is the chord progression for it. And I understand enough to know what what chords go in what keys and progressions and and how to put them up together. But that's that's just kind of by ear that that I've learned how to do all of that. So I'll tell them it's this, and then it goes to this chord or that, and and in this space. And I, I play acoustic guitar, so that helps a lot with um, when I write. I, I can kind of drive the rhythm and and get kind of like an idea of how I want the other instrumentation to be in a song. So writing the lyrics and knowing the feeling behind it and then being able to have a melody and, and play it on, on a rhythm guitar helps, you know, kind of uh, direct the band into the sound that I'm looking for. Keith Sampson is in the chat. He's another great uh, country artist that we have on our show. We play a lot of his tunes. Um, Welcome, Keith. Thanks for tuning in. Another one, uh, first thing he said was a great story. And before that, where is it over here? He said, uh, thank you for your service. I uh, appreciate it, Keith. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't want that to go by. No, no. Thank you. <clears throat> Proud Americans. Anybody else in your family uh, musically inclined? Uh, you know, no one before me. Uh, I, I do have a daughter, my youngest daughter. She's 16, and, and she kind of got it from me, and she's uh, she can sing. I mean, she's got a voice like, oh, my gosh, she's so pure and clean. And she can play ukulele. So uh, oh, she's, she's kind of, yeah, you know, and she's, she's a tiny little thing. So um, she'll eventually work her way up to guitar, I think, you know, but... Um, but yeah, she's she's gotten really good, and she's a vocalist, and she's actually on um, a couple songs on the record, uh, on the new record, Southern Ground, so she's doing some harmony vocals on a few songs with me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's a great tune, man. I played that first out of the hole here. Man, does that sound good. Thank you. Yeah, that's the, that's the title track off, of, uh, off the album. Well, we've been getting into new music because, you know... Th- the Nashville sound is is old to me. After you know, it's not just old; it's it's terrible. It's, I think yeah, it sounds well, most of it yeah. sounds like ass. Yeah, I didn't but. want to actually <laughs> just beat it to death because I really could. I could go on a rant about how ridiculous it is. But uh, point is, you know, you and Keith Sampson and uh, Steve Hickman and oh, there's a whole list of uh, guests that we've had on the show over the last few years. All mm-hmm. this, this new music is this independent music. Are you are you you consider yourself an independent artist? Oh, I'm completely independent. I'm completely it's... independent. Completely self funded. Um, I you know I, I go out and I play weekends and I play shows and I you know and and everything that I, that I make from it is what goes towards making the album and recording. I don't have a manager. I don't have a an agent. I don't have a record label. Um, it's it's hustle, you know, and it's work, but it's 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 so rewarding and I get to write what I want to write, I play what I want to play, and I get to I get to be me. I don't have to put on an act, I don't have to put on a show. And if I want to say that so much on FM country right now is 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 shit, then I can say that. Yeah. And cuz it's well, what it I believe and it's what I feel. It. No, you know, and and I'm I'm not. I just, matter of fact, I saw a little meme today. It was on Instagram or something. A picture of Johnny Cash, and it said, "I'd rather be hated for for being who I am than loved for being fake." Exactly. And um, you know, so this is this is me, and this is my music, and it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and I don't have to be. Mm, you know, I'm, 
<laughs> yeah, well, I know Brits like the tea, you know. I, I like I like mine I like mine cold and sweet, you know, being from the oh. south. But... <sighs> Nothing like a good but, glass uh, of cold tea. No, you that's right. A nice hot cup of tea with some milk yeah. and some sugar. Are you originally mm -hmm. from Florida? Um, my father was career army, so I grew up kind of all over, but mostly from the south. He's originally from Florida. Um, I was born in Virginia and lived in North Carolina and also spent some time uh, when I was, when I was a young kid in Japan and, uh, Maryland and, uh, lived two and a half years in Hawaii, but moved to Florida when I was probably about, um, 15 when he retired and pretty much been here since, you know, with the exception of about 15 months over in the Middle East. But, um, but I, I, I like it. The part of Florida I live in, it's, uh, it's a little more agricultural, a little more, you know, we people don't realize it, but yet in Florida we got our rednecks and we got our country boys and, and right. big jacked up trucks, and that's what I like. Uh, do you uh, speaking of trucks? Well, uh, let me back up here. I had another question. Um, geez, now I forgot. Okay, we'll go back to the trucks. <laughs> do you have a truck now? I do. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, that's I'm, I'm sitting in it at the moment while we're talking. So what? What is it? <laughs> I have a Toyota Tundra. Ah, oh, come on! Oh, that was that's the wrong. Not, that was the wrong. That's episode. not redneck. It, it's. <laughs> I didn't say I was redneck. I said we have them here. I didn't say I was. I don't consider myself a redneck. I'm, I'm a right. southern guy, but not a redneck. All right, all right. I'll give you that. <laughs> and you know, you know what's funny though is, is um. I was looking at a thing the other day and looking at um, everybody talks about old oh, buy American, buy American, and there are the factories and stuff that are here in the U.S. You know that a Toyota Camry has more parts made and assembled in the U.S. than the Chevy Malibu. Well, that doesn't surprise me, but that's Chevy. I wouldn't yeah. have one if you right. Gave but I'm just that. saying, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, are you still on active duty? I am not. No, I got out completely in uh, 07. So what do you do? You have a uh, regular job? I do. I have a, I have a full time, uh, pretty much Monday through Thursday job that I that I work and then uh, play music on the weekends and when I can. Very cool. So do you have? You know, we're we're uh, boy, got so many questions. Where did you do your recording at? Nashville or around Florida? Somewhere? Oh no, no. Um, there's a there's a recorded great recording studio in Fort Myers, Florida. It's about an hour and a half from me called the vibe and um just some amazing people great engineers great producer down there named julian sunby that uh i got connected with and um i, re I recorded my first ep there recorded uh a uh two singles down there and then this this album southern ground recorded there as well oh the sound is great coming out of that place yeah, they are just phenomenal. And some of the musicians that, that we had on the record, you know, as much as I don't like a lot of the, the modern country sound that's out there, the, the people that play the music, the musicians, phenomenal guys. Um, on two of the songs on this record, um, Southern Ground, and then another one called Bipolar Princess. I don't know if I sent that one to you guys or not. No, you didn't, but I like the title. Uh, yeah, and again, there's an element of truth there. Um but um, but on those two tracks, I actually have the um, – it's uh, James Cook and Kent Slucher, and they are the current bass player and drummer for Luke Bryan. So they're playing on those tracks. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Stuff. Yeah, and, and great guys, super nice guys. Yankee and the Brit on a country Saturday night. We're talking with Adam C. Martin. Uh, with uh, Now, you, you call your band the Blackbird Anthem, or, or do you go Correct. by your name? Yep. Nope. the The band is uh, the band is Blackbird Anthem. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how I labeled it. But everything you yep. know that you sent came through under your name, so I wasn't quite sure how that was working. <clears throat> yep. No. Nope. It's uh, if if I book kind of solo shows and I kind of book under my name, you know, you can't really book a whole band and it's just one guy that shows up. Um, but if it's a <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and if I ever put out like a little solo or an acoustic record, which uh, that might be happening here pretty soon, then uh, it'll that'll probably be out under my name. But anything band and full band shows is Blackbird Anthem. That's very good. Where how, where can people find you at? I'm sure you have a Facebook page, of course. I do. Um, so uh, Blackbird Anthem. If you look up that that you know name under anything. Um, I'm the only Blackbird Anthem band that's out there. I was, I was very careful when choosing a band name. And uh, so we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. we got a YouTube channel, Spotify. We're on Spotify. And then um, 
the older stuff you can you can go you can download already on iTunes and Amazon and Google. And the new record, Southern Ground, um, you can pre-order it now, and then it'll be uh, in your Dropbox on February 16th. So, a little less than two weeks away on that. How did you come up with the name Blackbird Anthem? Um, kind of two uh, two areas, or I, I guess um, one of my favorite artists of all time is Johnny Cash. Um, you know, and it sounds kind of cliche, but I I love the way he could tell a story. Absolutely. in a song um just a, an amazing storyteller in in his writing and and the way he presented the story in the song so and he was often called the dark bird of country music i mean he would dress in black and matter of fact when he first started playing he was considered rock and roll i mean he was touring with elvis and jerry lee lewis and he wasn't even with the country guys because at the time that was hanks senior and so a very different sound um so johnny cash is is one and then um, my probably my all-time favorite band, and I've loved these guys since I was in high school. They came out my senior year, and that's a band called Counting Crows. And um, Counting Crows, I've seen them live probably at least 14 times. And when you go see them live, it is it's an experience. It's not just a concert. They put so much emotion and passion into their music, and it's nothing like it sounds on the record, which I love. You know, if I want to hear the record, I'll put the record on. But a live show, I want something a little unique and different. So we had the Crows aspect from Counting Crows, Dark Bird from Johnny Cash. And so that's where Blackbird came from. Beautiful. That's and a, then Anthem. That's What's a, that? That's a story in itself right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, very, very, I'm a very symbolic kind of person, you know. So then uh, Anthem, I'm like, you know, if I could write songs and tell stories like Johnny Cash and if I could perform – like Counting Crows does, then then to me, that's what music needs to kind of get back to and should be about. So an anthem is a rally cry. An anthem is this is, you know, this is what it should be. So Blackbird Anthem is where it came from. Well done. Are any of your videos, uh, 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 what do I want to say, uh, professional videos, I guess, for lack of a better way? No, I, I don't have any. Everything is... Uh, Either, you know, an iPhone recording or, or you know, an iPad. Uh, I, I do want to record some videos. I have some ideas, but being self-funded, you know, it's a, I had to put everything right now into this album. But, um, but I, do have, uh, I do have some ideas for a couple of the videos and some things coming up. But nothing professional yet. Yeah, what you were talking about live. You know, I love to watch a good live show, and, you know, we can't uh, leave the business for very long. Uh, we do T-shirts and signs and things, so we really can't just disappear. But, you know, I can sit and watch YouTube while I'm working and things, and uh, it's nice to watch some good live videos once in a while and see what the people look like that we talk to, too. Yeah, um, you know, some of the ones are I actually every now and then I've done it once. I need to do it again. Is I'll do a um, just a weekend Facebook Live concert, and um, I'll play for about an hour on Facebook, and people can type in and request songs. I'll do a little storytelling, um, and that, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy that. So I was going to ask look, you. Look for one of those coming up. I was going to ask you what you thought about Facebook and uh, you know doing a live video. Do you think it's uh... You know, I've asked quite a few few people, and the majority say that they think it's worth it. I just wonder what your thoughts were on it. I do, you know, and um, it's a, it's it's a great way to be able to to reach directly to fans, to reach directly to the people that are hearing your music, and you know, going to a concert uh, with you know ten, twenty thousand other people, where you're looking at the artist on stage, and they're you know they're about the size of a of a Lego. Um, you know that that that's one type of music experience, but if you can if you can kind of be right there in front of them and they can they can you know text or type in a question and then just a couple you know a minute or two later you can answer that question much like you guys are are doing with your show. You know you have the people that that type in and and get your chat rooms. Well, imagine being able to do that with an artist that you enjoy the music with. Oh yeah, we and, have you know a couple of uh, yeah. good friends and, do live videos and uh, you know I think people feel more connected when they can actually kind of feel like they're with you talking to you and you know they're and I I know it sounds a little little I don't know but they're like oh boy I got to talk to him you know that kind of thing and and you know but for me as a as a songwriter and as an artist I I want that engagement I want you know to to be able to to give fans and listeners that experience because that's something that I would want from you know an, an artist or a singer that 
that I, you know, heard a song and felt a connection to in some way. So I, I try to give fans things that that I would want as as a fan of another artist. So what music did you grow up listening to? Uh, it's very similar stuff to what I play now. Um, my dad had an extensive record collection and uh, a vinyl, and it was it was Leonard Skinner and Hank Jr. and Elvis and uh, I mean, but he also had like Kiss and. Uh, eagles and so very much that that country and rock and and southern rock is what i what i grew up listening to and then um of course as a as a young kid you know in the 80s i mean i was then i developed an interest i loved guns and roses and a lot of the the hair bands and stuff and 90s you go through the the teen angst i mean i was i bought the nirvana album and pearl jam 10 and you know still love that that alternative grunge um and then uh you know counting crows so i, I have a very eclectic taste in music but um what i what i naturally gravitate to as a writer and as a performer is kind of that gritty southern rock sound that's where home is for you then basically it is yeah it's very much home for me that's a great way to put it are you familiar with little feet oh yeah you know i don't hear anything like that anymore well you know and a lot of it is it's out there but it's not on mainstream you know i wish more of them would come out and let us hear that music because that's the stuff that us you know, my generation, I guess, that likes the Southern rock, that's the kind of thing we're looking for, like your music, things like that. It's just not out there. And, you know, thank God for Kelly Lee Phillips hooking us up with you and all these other people. And, and you know, I'll tell you where there's so much of that kind of music coming out of right now, and it's Texas. Texas has, I mean, there's there's a great, great Southern rock band called Whiskey Myers that are, some, you know, they're, they're getting out and they're doing some great things. Uh, Scooter Brown Band, um, they're that great. They, they've just been opening for uh, Charlie Daniels. They're out of Texas. Um, Texas has got such an amazing music scene. I, I try to get over there and play about you know three or four times a year, and uh, I'll probably be doing about a two-week run in Texas this summer. Um, and they want to hear the live music. They want to hear new stuff. They want to hear original. And you know they'll they'll call it Texas Red Dirt. Did you manage to get hold of that guy, or have you not tried yet? Um, which one um, was it? Um, the one I said I couldn't remember the name of. <laughs> oh. I, I have talked to a couple guys out of Texas, um, so uh, we're 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 working on some things. But I will be in uh, I will be in the Houston area this summer, and maybe up into uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Just kind of depends on where I can get booked. But um, but I do uh, I I get out to Texas about three or four times a year, and you can bet I'll be out there this summer for sure. Beautiful. Well, we're up in North Texas, just just off the Oklahoma border. There's also a couple okay. places you want to consider too. One would be Denison, Texas, and one would be uh, where the hell did we honeymoon at over there? What the hell is it called? Denton. Denton, Texas. Great Denton. music scene over there. It's growing all the time yeah. over that way. Tell you another guy that uh, he he kind of makes the run down through like Oklahoma, Texas. Two guys. Uh, I'll send you their contact. One is uh, Nick Sterling. Nick's a good friend of mine. He's a Purple Heart uh, Army vet, and he's got a record coming out this month. Also, him and I have we've played some shows together, and just a phenomenal artist. And then uh, Padre Paul Handelman. He's a former Army Ranger. And uh, he just had an EP come out. Very, very much, I mean, original type music and artists. And uh, I think you guys would really enjoy their, their stuff and maybe some, some future people to be on the show for you. I love the name Padre. Very good. Yeah, and he's, he's, an, actual, he's an actual father. He, he, uh, he, uh, he performed a wedding ceremony and sent off to get his, um, I'm not sure what you call it, and uh, card-carrying member. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Padre Paul Handelman. That's all right. You never yeah. know when you'll need one. That's true. That's true. Um, he can bless the whiskey before we drink it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bless my whiskey. I like it just straight out of the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't need any help from anybody. <laughs> and it may help with the hangover in the morning. I could only hope. Yeah, right. Uh, any uh, anything you would like to add? I got a couple questions I'd like to ask you before we wrap it up. But uh, you uh, are you working on? Uh, you said you're working on a new EP. Well, no, the, the new album comes out um, comes out in two weeks. So, uh, but there, we may have an, an acoustic um, 
acoustic record coming out here maybe in, in the next few months i want, I want this new album to kind of get out there and do some stuff but may have a little underground kind of bootleg acoustic thing that that i may push out there here in a in a few months we'll just have to see you said you do your live Facebook any particular time of the day that you do it in, at night during the day. And normally, it's it's kind of on a weeknight. You know, it's uh, kind of later on, on a weeknight during the week. And it is people go out on Fridays and Saturday nights, especially right. ones that like live music. Right. And um, you know, and call me crazy, but a lot of us we believe in uh, musicians that that I talk to and hang out like Nick and Paul and these guys. You know, we believe in supporting each other. And, and pushing each other forward. So I'm not, I don't want to try to do something on a weekend that's going to cause someone to stay in the house and not go out and see some live music. Well, I so I may, do it, go I may do it on a Tuesday or Thursday or something in order to, uh, to still you know, be respectful of the ones that are out there actually playing live that weekend. Well, we've got to uh, – got to get hooked up on your page over there so I can get a notice when those come on. Yep. Yep, no, I, I, I'm really good about posting things up and when things are going to happen and where we're playing next. Awesome. Well, let's see. Uh, a couple questions here, and then uh, we'll cut you loose. I don't want to keep you all night, but uh, I, could all just, right. I could just sit here. Ask and... away. These are really boring questions. Oh, I have well, to you have warn to you. That every damn you time. might want to just uh, put the phone down Boring now. questions. Uh, okay, I, I, I put on my left shoe first, um, <laughs> and then the sock. Um, but, no, put, shoot, go ahead. How did you put your underpants on? Which leg first? Because these questions um, really are that boring. Oh, I would say probably usually the left. It's usually the left leg first. Oh my gosh, yep. it's the left leg, oh, husband. Are you done now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, then ask him your boring 10 questions. You're married, right? I am, yes. Any idea why? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know exactly how Randy feels. Let me borrow your uh, idea so I can see what it's really all about. I seem to be missing something over here. Oh, yeah? Well, you think? I, I, I can't help you. You know, I'm not a detective. I can't find what you're missing, you know, but all right. I can help you write a song about it. But. Where's that Padre at? I think I need him now. There you go. Padre okay. Paul Handelman. Your first question is, what is your favorite word? Oh. Man, a favorite word. I, I've never been asked that question. Now's the time to come so, up. Never been asked that boring question before. See, I told you no, it was I mean, I, mean I, I have a favorite saying, but I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite word. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just I. <laughs> I I. <laughs> we don't play this. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. What's your least favorite word? Oh. Uh, Least favorite word, probably jail. <laughs> <laughs> I said I word, not an experience. <laughs> oh well, um, you're going. I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I never thought about that either. You know, you're gonna make me think about this and have to get back to you. All right. Well, we ain't going anywhere. I hope not right away. Number three. Right. What turns you on? Music. What turns you yeah. off? Um. Intolerance. What sound do you love? The sound of a of a crowd. What sound do you hate? You know, you would think that the answer would be silence, but it's not. Um, I love silence. I can't get enough. I, I, I do. I do too. You know, that, that's that's where I write the best. It actually um, strikes me as a very rare commodity at this point. You know, in the world. Yeah. No, I I, I like silence. Um, what sound do I hate? Um, um, Silence is gone. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't like any, anything. Any any kind of chaotic sound. I could relate to that. You know, like, like any any any, any. Yeah, I don't. You know, I had a car bomb explode um, next to my Humvee, and so sometimes in. In, in rooms, if there's like a lot of talking and, and background noise, I have difficulty kind of hearing like if someone's like speaking directly to me. So like the white noise and it, it sometimes it gets to be a little chaotic. Um, and so cha- chaotic noise, noise that doesn't have like pattern or something because yeah, it usually I just kind of got to walk away from it. All right. This, so this, chaotic noise. This is the Internet. So what is your favorite curse word? Uh, I'd probably shit. What profession? I, that's all right. That's perfect. You know, mine is fuck. 
<laughs> yeah. No, I mean, cause, cause literally well, when you said, what's my favorite curse word? I'm like, oh, shit. What would it? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, it's shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's shit. Yeah. What profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Oh, you know, I've I've had so many. I mean, I was I was a soldier. I mean, for a while I was a full time corrections officer. I worked at a state prison. I was a cop for a while. Um, and my full time job now, I mean, I don't even think I told you what it was. I'm a college professor. So that's what I do full time now. Um, but if I didn't have music and I could like choose a job, maybe acting. What profession would you not like to do? I would not want to go back to corrections or law enforcement work. There you go. See, that was the easiest one we've had so far. Yeah. Number 10, two more. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done. And one more. If you could have a party in the sky with anyone, who would it be? Oh, my gosh. Just just one person? Anybody? That's not a party. We know it's going to be Johnny Cash. <laughs> you know, well, he'd be there, you know, but I... I'd I'd pull like some of my closest friends, and we'd 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 hang with like Waylon and and Johnny and and Elvis and a lot of these just this, these pioneers of sound that that just kind of took it and even even Kurt Cobain you know and and is just these pioneers of a new sound that said we're going to do something different and if you like it great if you don't then you don't That's but it. um but yeah just pioneers of sound along with some of my closest music and, and and buddies today beautiful answer every one of them that's great i don't think i could have come up with a better one than that i guess my party in the sky with someone you know it would be like let's just say you and johnny cash and of course you would have other people around you but that would be the main your main bro yeah. at the time. It, it, it would you know i mean i i know i've read in in so much of the story of his life and his music and i mean everything from from his days of, of you know being a, a drug addict and pills and and uh you know the the terrible spiral that he was in with his first marriage and then such a beautiful relationship that he had with june carter and um just the and everything with his gospel and the relationship that he he had with his faith um just like, I don't think you could have a more experienced man that lives such a long life. There's just so much wisdom there, not just from the music, but just as, as a man and as a person. Fantastic. Well, I could just sit here and talk with you all night long. I'm sure you got a lot of great stories, but we want to get a couple of your tunes on here, and we don't want to keep you from uh, pursuing whatever it is you do. All right. Well, uh, just... Uh... Don't have a whole lot of plans tonight other than uh, at some point finding a bottle of whiskey when I get home and uh, sip on a little bit of that, a little little Kentucky bourbon. Oh, so, baby. Well, when you find it, you tell it I said hello. I will. I will. So the Yank said hi. All right, soldier. But, thank uh, you very much. <clears throat> appreciate your time. That's for sure. Hey, no, appreciate you guys having me on, and I'll send you some info about Nick and Padre Paul, too. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Play it's... the tunes and, uh, you know, encourage everybody, like us on Facebook. You know, so much today is, 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 you know, when you're trying to book venues, oh, what you're following, what you're this. So all, all those likes, you know, they help tremendously. Absolutely. And send me that. Spin us on Spotify. Song. Send me that. I will. I'll, I'll get it to you. You'll like it. It's um, the catch line of it is uh, don't let that door hit you in the ass. So, <laughs> ah, Do you have the lyrics for any of these songs anywhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll get them to you. I'll well, I'd like you. the one for the train song, if anything. I think that's one all I'd right. like to learn to sing along with. Matt, that's kind of my ode to Johnny Cash. It's about a guy that kind of his girl leaves him for another dude, so he goes down and kills him and ends up having a swing for it. So can't beat that. No, well, that's what it is. That's what a train song's about, right? Well, it's My a beautiful to thing. Johnny Cash. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Johnny Cash. Yeah. Well, thank you, my friend, very much for spending some time with us. All right, thanks for having me on, and you guys have a great night. You good bet night. we will. All right, good night. Thank Bye. you. Blackbird Anthem, Tonight We Ride. Great stuff from Blackbird Anthem and Stay Strong with the Yankee and a Brit on a Country Saturday night. Uh, sorry about the little glitch, but uh, thanks for coming back, everybody. Nice to have you hanging out here. That guy's awesome, man. Love that guy. Great guy to talk to. Great music. You can't beat it. And he's an independent artist. I love it. That's my kind of music right there. 
you guys just hang around because we got some more good tunage going on right here and uh we expect you to do nothing more than enjoy it live from the rtm radio network studio it's a country saturday night Gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I'm going to ask that you please remain seated. We're experiencing a little bit of turbulence. Why listen to those other guys on the weekend? When you can listen to the Yankee and the Brit. Every Friday and Saturday night, 7 p.m. Texas time. <laughs> Steve Owen, Benny Pitzinger, the Dixie Crew. Leave me here in Alabama. Cletus is passing by Billy Bob's hay barn one day when through a gap in the door he sees Billy Bob doing a slow and sensual strip tease in front of an old green John Deere. Buttocks clenched, he performs a slow pirouette and gently slides off first the right strap of his overalls, followed by the left. He then hunches his shoulders forward, and in a classic strip tease move, he lets his overalls fall down to his hips, revealing a torn and frayed plaid shirt. Grabbing both sides of his shirt, he rips it apart to reveal his stained t-shirt underneath. With a final flourish, he tears the t-shirt from his body and hurls his baseball cap onto a pile of hay. Having seen enough, Cletus rushes in and says, What the heck are you doing, Billy Bob? Jesus, Cletus, you scared the bejesus out of me, says an obviously embarrassed Billy Bob. But me and the old lady been having trouble lately in the bedroom department. And the therapist suggested I do something sexy to a tractor. Don't let save a horse, ride a cowboy. Or you can ride a dick. Way to go, Stacy. Yankee and the Brits, the place to be. Radio living is the life for me. Airwaves spreading out so far and wide. Keep your FM, just give me that internet side. Stay. I've got a lot of music to play. I just adore a Yankee view. Darling, I love you, but give me a show to do. The chat. The brats. On air. That's fair. You are my wife. Goodbye, British life. The Yankee and the Brit.